Hey there, welcome back to another episode of Larry's Workbench, where we're doing projects that are fun, they're interesting, and you guys are finding them fun and interesting also. I really appreciate that. I appreciate all the comments. I appreciate all the likes, because that actually really um, gives me a lot of enthusiasm for this project. So if you guys are having fun watching these videos, let me know, and I'll keep making them. And, and that'll be great, because you can see, uh, you know, we've got Floyd D here. As you're aware from his other videos, Floyd is a talking robot. Floyd is fully conversational. He can talk on any topic and um, you can really have a conversation with him. And that's not something we expected to see in 2024, but that's kind of where we are. So today we are talking about the API calls that allow Floyd to do this. You know, Floyd is powered by a Raspberry Pi 4B and that sits just on the back of the, of the bot right here. And that Raspberry Pi through Wi-Fi is talking to the large language models at OpenAI, and it's using what's called an API. API is an application programming interface. And we're gonna, I'm gonna show you the code that Floyd uses to do exactly that. So an API basically allows a computer to talk to another computer. For example, it could allow your phone to talk to your bank or to talk to some other computer on the internet. And it's basically a code or a language that is predefined by the computer generally up in the cloud says, hey, if you send information to me in this certain format, I'll send information back to you in a certain format and you can decode it. And this, re this relies on Wi-Fi. The Raspberry Pi does have Wi-Fi built in and I happen to have fiber optic uh, here to the lab. So, you know, we do have plenty of bandwidth, plenty of connectivity, so mm, yay for us. But uh, uh, so it's pretty zippy, it's pretty fast, and eventually I'll take Floyd to another environment and we'll see how he works in a different environment. But anyway, we're talking about his first API call. So the first thing you have to do to execute this API call is you have to set up an account at OpenAI, okay? Or wherever you're gonna be doing your API call, I'm using OpenAI. Now that account is costing me seven or eight bucks a month. I pay for usage. Now this is a different account than you would be using if you're just running chat GPT. Basically, you're accessing the same models, but with different constraints. Uh, I think it's a few less guardrails, to be honest, and you're accessing them kind of under the hood from a programming point of view, as opposed to just communicating with chat GPT through your browser. Uh, you can think of chat GPT as running, let's say you're running the model GPT-4.0 for Omni. Chat GPT is like, kind of a shell or a wrapper that allows you to communicate with that underlying language model. Well, Floyd is gonna also communicate with that same underlying language model, and I'm gonna show you how. So I'm gonna turn the camera around here so we're able to see that, and let's see, we'll just rotate that over here. Hopefully you guys are gonna be able to see all this. Now you know that this is the Raspberry Pi wallpaper screen and you know that I'm running Thonny and Thonny is what allows me to run my Python code. So I open up Thonny which is just a little development environment and we're looking at the Python code right here. Now let's see what that looks like. Okay what is this? It's 10 lines of code, 8 lines of code, something like that. This lines at the top here we talked about importing libraries into the Raspberry Pi or into Python, let's say. So I'm importing OpenAI. And then of course, you've got to have your OpenAI key right here. It just says blah, blah, blah. But I do have an OpenAI key. Uh, I've got it sort of hidden away. You can't see it. But anyway, you've got to have your OpenAI key. You would put it there. And these lines are yellow because they're commented out. Now let's see. We've got this infinite loop while true. It's going to accept an input from the user and then it's going to create a response by sending that up to openai.chat.completions.create. The model is GPT-4.0, which is the most advanced model at OpenAI, and it's going to receive a text response, and it's going to print the text response. So now, let's go ahead and run that by clicking the green button here, and let's see if we can get it to run. And now we've got a, um, we've got a console screen down here. Hopefully you can read that. Please type in your prompt, and I'm just going to type hello there, and I'm going to click return. And let's see if it's going to deliver a response. And there it is. Hello, how can I assist you today? Look at that. That is so cool. 
And I'm going to be honest, this was the first API call I wrote um, when I started this project uh, maybe five months ago, whatever it was. And when I entered it in and I got that response, I was so psyched. It was so cool. Let's think about what's happening here. I'm typing on a keyboard connected to my Chrome box. The Chrome box is connected wirelessly to the Raspberry Pi. It's getting an input to the Pi. It's telling the Pi to reach out over Wi-Fi up to OpenAI. It's sending an input, hello there, to OpenAI. And OpenAI is delivering a response. Hello, how can I assist you today? And that's really, really super cool. Now, you are going to see that this response is pretty generic. Uh, so uh, let's see. Let's just try what's your name now remember we're just talking to open ai right now we're just talking to effectively chat gpt it's not really chat gpt i don't have a personal name but you can call me assistant how can i help you today now any of you guys that have played around with open ai at all you know that the responses it gives sometimes they're kind of boring they're kind of flat just like that or they can be really extensive. I tested out a response um, where I tried this earlier and I asked uh, how many bones are in the human body. And it just gives me this long dissertation, very chat GPT, uh, very boring, very uninteresting. It's magic because the large language module is delivering this information, but this information is not coming back. It's not, there's no personality there. Okay, and so, but, but what's interesting is like I said, Eight lines of code that are allowing us to get, deliver this prompt and this response. So that's very cool. We're going to go into, in subsequent videos, how we get Floyd to talk, how we get Floyd to transcribe text, convert text to speech, where Floyd's personality comes from, where Floyd's context memory comes from, and all these different types of things. So if you're interested, there's another video right up here. Please go ahead and give that a watch and go ahead, like, subscribe, leave us a comment and thank you for watching.